music. Your Cam FM. Hi, everybody. This is Conrad Wilton here. I have the pleasure of being on the phone with Rachel Corbishley, who is the former CUSOS president. That's C-U-S-O-S. And uh, Rachel, you're a third year studying politics here at Cambridge. Thanks for coming on Conrad's Corner. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So, uh, CUSOS, what does CUSOS stand for? So, CUSOS stands for the Cambridge University Society for SLS Children's Villages. Okay. Um, SLS Children's Villages is a large charity, and we're sort of a student body that helps them and supports them and fundraises on behalf of them. Okay, and this is sort of a worldwide type of a situation, I think? Uh, yes, so um, SOS Children is the world's largest orphan charity, and they work in over 120 different countries. Excellent. And they have sort of student supporter groups dotted all around the UK. Okay, and how old is the program? Well, the charity is almost 60 years old. Okay. Um, and the university group is, I think, about six or seven years old. Um, but the charity has obviously been going for, for a really long time. They were founded after the Second World War, when, understandably, there were lots of orphans, and um, a Cambridge graduate wanted to do something about it, and so he established the program then. Really? So it was established by a Cambridge graduate, but are other college students involved, or is it sort of exclusively Cambridge? Um, No, yeah, like other students around the country have programs as well. So Cambridge was the first university to set up a sort of a supporters group. Right. um, because the UK headquarters is based in Cambridge. Okay. But then other universities have followed suit. So I think there's now a group in Manchester and um, in London. So there's, there's dotted around the UK. Right, right. And this basically sort of encourages healthy family development with kids uh, and who are f- fortunately orphans. So they need resources, I guess, and necessities. So they have the resources to fulfill their potential, I suppose? Yeah. So okay. So the, how the um, SOS Children's, the actual charity works is they um, set up, they will home between five and ten orphans with an SOS mother who is a woman from the local community and there'll be a few different families in a in a community and the charity provides the the necessary resources as you said um, for these new families Um, and what we do is we work to um, raise awareness for the charity as I'm doing now as well as organize fundraising events to help the charity do what they do, as well as um, go into local schools and talk to school children in England about um, how how international development works overseas. Now, does the program work exclusively with orphans or in situations where maybe the family unit is, is not acting as perhaps as it should, you know, sort of helping children out who might have parents who are either yeah. abusing it because, you know, it's a worldwide deal. I'm sure they probably see everything. Yeah, exactly. So um, their priority work is with orphans, but a lot of their work um, in recent decades has expanded and they do a lot of work now. And this is why, this is a part of the reason that um, I support SLS is that they don't work exclusively with orphans. They also do a lot of work where the family unit is threatened, um, a lot of work with families where the parents might have AIDS um, or where the parents might be um, called up to go to war, go to fight and things like that and so they'll work to keep as, as far as they possibly can they'll work to keep the family unit together where appropriate now we said that this is internationally speaking but is it more ex- uh, i guess concentrated in africa per se or is it really um, around the yeah, entire I world mean, yeah for obvious reasons a lot of their work is in africa but right. they're actually they're all over the place as well so they work i think they have 125 countries in which they work so that's like a, a, a lot a of places over the lot. world but um obviously a lot of their aid relief work is in africa yeah and how long have you been personally involved with qsos i got involved when i was a fresher so i've just finished my second year so i've been involved for two years excellent i like how you say it the freshers like back around from we call fresh men <laughs> but then that sort of isolates the women so therefore it's more of a but anyway okay so and why did you personally get involved with qsos though and, and try to make a difference that way why um, did you choose this charity instead of another one well I knew I wanted to. I knew I wanted to work in a charity, and I thought that it'd be good to get some volunteer experience at university. And I, what I really liked about this student society was that the main charity is based in Cambridge. So at the Freshers' Fair, I didn't just speak to a student. I also spoke to a woman who works, whose full-time job is working for SOS Children, and so it's a really great opportunity to volunteer at an international NGO, go to their office, meet people who who really do work at the heart of international development and find out much more about it. So 
although I'm just working as a student volunteer, I get to find out much more beyond that. Now, do you get to work with some of the children that are actually directly benefiting from this program or no? Is it more secondhand? Um, personally, I haven't had the opportunity to. Um, SOS aren't, they don't do, they don't really send Western or British volunteers over. Um, it's not something they're a big fan of doing. They much rather work with the local community than send people into the local community. However, um, if you have volunteered for the charity, they, they're they really keen for you to go and look for a village um, and sort of meet the people that you've helped. So um, a couple of our committee members have been on holiday in a place where there's a village and got in touch and said, hey, I volunteer over in the UK. Can I come and have a look at what, what my money's gone towards, what my time's gone towards? And so there's an opportunity to go and see where where your work's gone. Um, and I know my friend Christy, who um, was on our committee last year, she went, went on her year abroad to Colombia and spent a few days at the village then and was really, really impressed with what she saw. So hopefully I'll go sometime soon. What, what's the time commitment per se? I mean, I guess some people are more involved than other people, but what's the time commitment? Uh, with I'm yeah. sure you got a hefty eyes of politics, you know, pursuit of study here at Cambridge. Things can get pretty busy. Yeah, it completely varies. Um, so I was president last year, and that was obviously a much bigger commitment than other positions. Um to be honest, compared to a lot of extracurriculars in Cambridge, it's really not a very big commitment at all. And you can be as involved as you like. So you could, if you wanted to just come along and support the charity, you could just come to an odd fundraiser that we organise. Or if you wanted to do a little bit more, you could have a position on the committee that might just involve coming to a meeting every other week and sort of giving your input. Or if you're more committed, then you could um, get really involved with planning events and with giving talks and doing school visits. So it completely varies. It could be anything from one event a term to four or five hours a week. Excellent. And I guess it helps you sort of get out of that Cambridge bubble and mm, make a difference. Which definitely. Is, which is a lot of times. We, we talk to a lot of students doing a lot of cool things, and we talk to folks doing uh, Afrinspire, which is an organization that helps mm. development out there. I'm sure you heard of them. And we talked to uh, Anna Machen with the Cambridge Hub. Laura Bins from Afrinspire. I don't know. You know Laura or Anna by any chance? Both Cambridge students. I know Anna. I've, I've done a bit of work with Anna. The Hub's great. And mm. Afrinspire as well. Does, they offer some fantastic opportunities to go to go off to um, Swaziland. It's, yeah, yeah, they sound fantastic. But but the resounding theme is that there are students here and a good number, an impressive number of students here at Cambridge that really do want to reach out and make a difference. And it's just a matter of finding that right organization to do it. And I'm happy to hear that CUSO sounds like it's the right fit for you. So mm. congratulations <laughs> with Definitely. that. <laughs> so anyway, I want to thank you for coming to Conrad's Corner and for keeping up the good work. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to speak to you.